last episode, uh, we did a little example uh, to demonstrate how Downing and Downing came up with their 95% um, measurement uh, error range. And that represented um, basically how much wiggle in the up and down measurement um, attributable to things like oh, where the, the calipers were positioned on the specimen. Um, you know, you might say human error in, uh, in the measurement of that dimension. And just looking at their, uh, their graph, these two lines here, the up and down lines, uh, represent the, the high and the low of the 95% range. And just reading it off the graph, um, it's a little bit over, or, or rather a little bit less than um, one millimeter and just shy of one millimeter on the positive side. So we're going to call that um, between 0.8 on the positive side and negative 1.1 on the negative side. That's how much wiggle there was uh, approximately uh, in Downing and Downing's results for shell height of Lampsilla siliquidia. The first thing I wanted to know was how, how good am I at this? Um, how do I stack up against uh, Downing and Downing? So I went back into the drawers of the uh, little shell museum that we have at St. Francis and I pulled out um, 23 specimens, museum specimens, uh, that had both um, left and right valve for each shell for siliquidia. And those shells, those, those valves were in um, uh, pretty good shape. They didn't have you know, big chips out of them or they weren't broken, that sort of thing. So I had um, just shy of two dozen of those to work with. And what I did was I went through and I, I, I measured the shell height for uh, each of those uh, on three separate occasions. So we're going to call those uh, A, B, and C. And here's the, the values for those measurements. So this uh, specimen ID number 119542 on the top um, was, uh, I came up with 47.5 for a shell height on uh, occasion a, uh, 47.5 on occasion B, and 47.6 on occasion C. And I applied the same basic uh, protocol to those data for shell height uh, that I came up with. Uh, I, I used the same uh, method uh, to analyze those as did Downing and Downing. And the uh, the limits on the 95% error range, in my case, was from ra ranged from negative 0.37 to positive uh, 0.80. And here's where I try to compare apples to apples. So um, the shell height measurements for Downing and Downing again ranged from negative 1.1 to 0. 8, and if you take those numbers, subtract them one from the other, uh, you get a, a total uh, range, magnitude of range, of about 1.9, or just shy of 2 uh, uh, millimeters um, from top to bottom. Uh, same thing uh, with, with my measurements. Um, I actually get a little bit less uh, of a range of 1.17. Uh, from top to bottom of the, the 95% um, uh, remeasurement error range. So this answers the question for me anyway, um, how well do I did I do measuring my museum specimens compared to what uh, Downing and Downing did? And they're, they're pretty comparable, pretty favorable uh, comparison. So uh, I think I'm on the right track here. And while I had um, my museum specimens in hand, I went a little bit beyond what Downing and Downing did. I went ahead and measured uh, the length and the width uh, for each of those specimens um, 
on each of those three occasions. So I have a, a similar data set for shell length, as I just showed you for shell height, and I have another one for shell width. And without going through all that again, uh, the, the amount of wiggle in my shell length measurements um, ranged, 95% range went from uh, 0 0.27 to 0 0.23. And the amount of wiggle uh, in the, the side to side measurements, the, the width um, ranged from 95% range went from zero, uh, minus 0 0.17 to positive uh, 0 0.20 millimeters. And let's look at all that in, in one uh, table, including this table also includes the, the downing and downing. Uh, data or measurements. Uh, the, the least amount of wiggle uh, among my three measurements uh, comes here in the, the, the width. So 0 0.37 for a range for shell width measurements. And then next up was shell length. And height turned out to be the one with the most um, variation of all three of mine. Now, as I've said before, I rather like to use, um, to combine all three um, linear measurements into one um, estimate of muscle size uh, using the uh, formula for an ellipsoid volume to approximate uh, the, the volume uh, taken up by the animal. And uh, of course, that's um, four thirds pi times ABC. And in, in our terminology, uh, the, the shell width divided by two is A, and the shell length divided by two is B, and the shell height divided by two is C. So um, uh, what I'm going to do is combine all of those um, linear measurements into that one ellipsoid uh, volume measure. So how did I practically go about this? Well, I took the, um, the shell width and length and height values uh, obtained for an individual on a particular occasion, and I ran them through the formula to get uh, one value for uh, ellipsoid volume. And I created a, a, a data matrix that looks like what's coming up next. So just to kind of beat that dead horse, uh, on, on occasion A, I measured this ID number 11954.2. I measured its length width and height, and I use those linear measurements to determine a ellipsoid volume of 63.9 for that individual on that occasion. And then on a different day, I came back and I measured that same individual, got um, length, width, and height, and I came up with another um, 63.9 value for its ellipsoid volume. On the third occasion, I did those things and I wound up with an ellipsoid volume that day of 64.3. Taking the mean of those three and then subtracting each one from, uh, from the mean gave me the remeasurement errors in ellipsoid volume uh, cubic centimeters of those three values for this muscle 11954.2 on occasion A, B, and C. And after running uh, those numbers through Downing and Downing's method, I can say that my 95% measurement error range for ellipsoid volumes uh, was right around plus or minus one cubic centimeter. A 
gives us something of an answer to the question of how much uh, variation um, occurs when we're doing these linear measurements, at least uh, for me <laughs> working with museum specimens. Uh, now, how much variation uh, is there uh, among people who uh, aren't, you know, aren't as experienced at doing this uh, than am I? That's an open question, and one that I'm uh, starting to collect data uh, to, to get a handle on that. So you can look forward to a future video. I don't know if it'll be the next one or not, but uh, summarizing some work that I've done um, in having newbies <laughs> uh, doing this. Some uh, folks from the, uh, the freshman class at St. Francis have uh, participated in a little pilot project. Uh, and I'm, I'm working on, uh, on those analysis, um, and, and we'll see how far I get with that. So see you next time. Take care. Bye.